So I've done all the fine work, fine file work, um, cut all this down with a, a fine cut file, and now I'm down to doing sanding, and uh, I've gone over most of this with 100 grit already, and so I wanted to show you how I do that. Um, I use blocks with uh, paper glued to them. Um, I use uh, the same wedges I used to clean up some of the metal with paper on it, uh, dowels in different sizes, and sometimes I even take my files and uh, wrap my sandpaper around my files to get into these uh, spots like around here um, and around the cheek piece area I can get into these spots you know there's these uh, shallows with um, paper wrapped around a, a tapered file get right down into these really tight spots that way uh, you do want to be really careful though um, you don't want to like ride up over these edges you want to keep these edges nice and crisp nice and sharp and uh, keep them as clean as you can and so what I do is I typically go around the the uh, radius area first and then I come in with my block and do the do the top uh, that way if I do happen to slip over the edge when I come back in and do the flat it uh, cleans the edge back up and, and crisps it back up that way um, some guys prefer to scrape some guys like to sand um, I'm not particularly um, fond of either you know either either method works fine for me is I guess what I'm saying um, I use whatever technique needs to be used in a certain area if sanding makes it easier than scraping then I sand if scraping's easier to, easier to get a scraping tool down into an area then I use a scraper and, and scrape it down but uh, basically the idea is, is I want to get this all down to an even smooth finish um, like I said with this walnut about 360 grits probably going to be good 320 360 somewhere in there but I'm going to go to 360 on it to match the metal um, that is something else you need to be careful of since I am working wood and metal together the uh, wood cuts a lot faster than the metal does so you want to be real careful in these areas that you uh, don't take the wood down below the surface of the metal uh, you want to be able to take real light passes on this and clean up the metal to its 360 without taking this wood down below the surface so you do want to be real careful in these areas where wood and metal come together but uh, sanding them in place like this um, where everything's in in place like this allows it to all come down to a real real smooth finish this way where wood and metal come together um, you know virtually seamlessly basically and uh, I don't know if you can really see that but you can hopefully the camera will pick it up enough where you get the idea that uh, a good inletting job and a, and a proper sanding job will leave you a, a very basically seamless fit in here uh, real close tight fit and uh, make everything really tie together well uh, in between each sanding in between each grit I've got a spray bottle that I keep water in on my bench and uh, just a little you know spray bottle full of water and I spray this down in between each grit and uh, what that does is that raises the whiskers up in the grain and uh, then I come in with the next grit and sand the whole thing down with the next grit and then uh, hit it with water again uh, by the time I get to 360 um, this thing will have been whiskered five or six times and uh, then at 360 I can whisker it once or twice more and, and hit it again with the same 360 and uh, usually it's completely whisker free by the time I'm done so um, you know spraying it and whiskering it in between works really good the other thing that spraying it does is uh, any place you missed or any place that's still got some file mark or, or uh, any place you got to, you know didn't get the grit the next grit you went to you'll be able to see that when you spray it with water because those little deep spots in the grain and the wood will show up um, different than the uh, smoother surfaces around it so it allows you to come back and touch up those areas before you move on to the next grit so uh, well, just keeping a little water around spray it down uh, the only thing you have to worry about obviously is um, you know this is bare metal so when you're hitting with water uh, keep a rag around or a paper towel and wipe the, the metal down so it doesn't rust. Um, obviously you're going to keep sanding it and you're going to sand it off anyways, but uh, you can get water in places you don't want it. So uh, you know, go easy with how much water you spray these with. Just a light mist is all it really takes. And uh, keep your metal cleaned up so it doesn't rust on you. I figured I better stop and explain a few things because it dawns on me occasionally that not everybody is familiar with all the same terminology. Um, when I'm talking about whiskering, and hopefully the camera is able to catch this, I sprayed this with water and let it dry, and uh, you can see it raised up these little whiskers in the wood. Um, and that's what I mean by whiskering, is when you soak it, when you sand it, and then spray it down and let it dry, these little wood grains pop up, these little whiskers pop up. 
when you sand them down again to the next grit, what happens is, is it cuts some of them off. The sanding cuts some of the whiskers off. Others get pushed back down into the grain. And so that's why you keep spraying it and sanding it is so that you keep those whiskers popping back up and you sand them back down smooth. Uh, eventually, if you do that enough, you spray it and sand it, spray it and sand it, spray it and sand it. Eventually, you get rid of all those whiskers. They just disappear altogether. And that way, when you're down to your final grit and you've whiskered it enough to where there's no whiskers showing up, you're ready to go to finish at that point and you'll guarantee that when you start applying your finish it's not going to pop the grain up uh, the moisture from the finish isn't going to pop the grain up and, and whisker it up like this so you want to keep doing this in between the grits when you get to your final grit you want to do it a couple times and uh, just keep knocking those whiskers down until you get rid of all of them but that's what I mean by whiskering is it's those little raised features in the grain that the water makes it uh, pop up and you just keep sanding those off until they completely disappear The other thing I wanted to show you was uh, this tends to freak guys out the first time it happens to them. Um, when you're working metal and wood together and you're sanding this down, some of your metal, some of the metal grit, the filing from the metal, is going to get impregnated into the wood. And when you spray it with water, it has this tendency to turn purple. And uh, guys freak out the first time it happens to them. Oh no, I ruined my stock. Well, that's not really the case. Um, you just keep sanding it, and that purple disappears with every time you sand it. And uh, it doesn't affect the finish. Um, when you start putting finish on this, that doesn't show up at all. I've never had it work its way through the finish. All it is is it's just very fine, fine microscopic um, filings from the metal getting impregnated into the wood. And uh, when you sand it, the purple goes away, and the, the, what metal's left at the end of your sanding process, um, when you finish over it, um, it doesn't affect the color or the change of the finish, or at least I've never had it have, uh, give me any problems. So it's just one of those things that happens. It's just a little reaction to the, to the metal in the wood. Um, so just to be aware of that, for guys who've never done this, sometimes the uh, wood will turn purple around the, the metal work, and uh, it... Uh, you just sand it off and it, it's fine. There's no problem with it at all. All the sanding's done and I've whiskered this thing and uh, sanded it at the, at the finished grit, that 360, several times. Um, I've got it to a point now where when I spray it down with water it doesn't raise any whiskers anymore. It's a smooth finish now. And so now what I need to do is uh, walnut has open pores in it. Um, it's not a real tight, tight grain structure like a lot of maple stalks are. And so that really all needs to be filled in, all these open pores in here. And uh, there's a couple different ways you can do that. Um, you can obviously buy like commercial filler and uh, fill it that way if you want to. But uh, I don't usually do that. Um, I use a, a very basic old technique for doing this. Um, what I do is uh, I actually use my um, finish, the actual um, finish I'm going to use on this, which is a uh, custom shop blend of mine, but uh, I use the actual finish and I use, um, you can get these uh, sanding pads, these uh, polishing pads in different grits, um, everything from coarse through very fine. And uh, for this finish, um, I'll use a fine um, grit, which is the red one. And uh, what I'll do is I'll use my finishing oil because this isn't going to get stained, it's going to get a natural natural finish on it because this wood's going to be a really nice looking piece of wood with just a natural oil finish on it. And uh, so what I'll do is I'll use my I'll use my uh, oil finish and uh, one of these pads and uh, when I apply the oil to it and I rub this down it's going to do a very light abrasion to the surface of the wood and it's going to actually cause like a little slurry and it'll fill in all those grains. And this first coat is going to be fairly heavy. I'm going to put a fairly heavy coat of, of oil on here and uh, rub it all down so that it fills in the grain. And then I'll set it aside for a couple days. This first coat's going to be heavy and uh, it's going to take a while for it to dry. Probably two to three days for this first coat to dry. Once this first coat's dry though, then I'll come back and uh, sand it all off again. And uh, when I sand it back down and get that first coat sanded down completely, all the grain will be filled and I'll be able to start doing a hand rubbed oil coat on top of that. Um, so what I'll do is I'll leave the metal work in place for this first coat and uh, do all my... Um, fill work with the metal work in place and then when I do the sanding I'll sand it in place with the metal in place and then once that first coat's sanded off then I'll pull all my metal work out and uh, start doing my regular oil finish on this stuff so um, 
that's the way I like to do it and that's the way I get these greens filled in is by using the, the uh, uh, oil finish that I'm, is going to be the final finish on the gun um, after that uh, after this sanding this last sanding of, of the finish uh, oil finish is sanded down then everything after that will be a hand rub coat I'll do real thin coats um, probably 10 to 12 coats on this and uh, it'll be real real thin and it'll all be hand rubbed in and uh, it'll make a really nice finish but that's the way I do the fill work on this is uh, is to use an oil um, finish on this walnut and uh, hand rub the, the finish down so I get a little slurry going and it fills in all the pores that way. Um, the finish that I use, the oil finish that I use for most of my stocks is a little homemade blend of mine. Um, it's an old recipe that's been around for uh, several hundred years. I dug it up out of one of the old books um, and uh, it's kind of a classic oil finish for a lot of gun use. And uh, what it is is it's uh, boiled linseed oil and uh, you can use either turpentine or mineral spirits and you mix boiled linseed oil and turpentine or mineral spirits um, one to one by volume. So uh, if you're using like uh, say a cup of boiled linseed oil to a cup of uh, mineral spirits or one cup of turpentine, you mix those two together and get a nice mix going so it's nice and, and homogenous and then you take that mixture and mix a cup of tongue oil into it. You know, if you've got a one-to-one um, -one mixture of the, the tongue oil to the boiled linseed oil turpentine mix. So um, if you go with a cup of, cup of boiled linseed oil to a cup of turpentine, mix them together really well, then take a cup of that and mix it to a cup of um, I use high gloss tongue oil. You can use any gloss, you, any grade you want. But uh, the reason I use high gloss is, is because if I do need a really high end finish, I can get that high gloss out of it. If I want it uh, more matted or more dulled down or a more you know field grade finish, then all it takes is just buffing that finish back until you take the luster out of it. So I use high gloss tongue oil, and it's one to one on the boiled linseed oil and. Uh, turpentine and then a cup of that, a one-to-one -one mix of that to tongue oil. And uh, then I add some Japanese drying agents because boiled linseed oil doesn't actually dry very well on its own. Um, boiled linseed oil dries um, really, the only way it really truly sets up and hardens up is uh, under ultraviolet light. And so in order to get the boiled linseed oil to, to shorten the drying times and whatnot is uh, to add some drying agents to it. Um, and you can buy Japanese drying agents from uh, most of the woodworking supplies and uh, you just follow the directions on whichever brand you buy and, and add that amount of drying agent to the mix you've got. And so that's what I use. Is, uh, it's uh, boiled linseed oil, uh, turpentine or mineral spirits, and then tongue oil and some Japanese drying agents. And uh, it's basically, I mean, it's kind of a variation of uh, the modern equivalent would uh, be more like true oil. True oil is basically a, a similar mix as this. Um, this is, like I said, just an old recipe that I found in, in uh, one of the gunsmithing books. It's been a really good recipe that works really well for me, and so that's what I use. Um, and like I said, what I'll do is I'll take some of this and uh, I'll use it to uh, fill in the, the pores on the wood with pad like this here and uh, when I rub this I don't know if the camera's gonna pick this up or not but as I rub this in it's gonna cause a little slurry to be created here and it'll fill in all those little open grains in the pores and like I said this is gonna be a fairly thick coat this first one and I'm gonna go right over the metal and everything with this because uh, like I said I'm gonna sand this back down with the metal in place one more time so I'm not worried about this cover and the metal or causing any finish problems because it's all gonna get sanded down anyways but I like to do it with the metal in place for one thing then I'm not breaking any edges uh, the metal supports the wood and the other thing is is if there are any like real fine gaps or anything between the wood and metal um, obviously I try to do the best inletting job possible but uh, this will also um, kind of fill in any little small gaps between wood and metal on my fits so doing it with the metal in place works really good and like I said this is going to be a, a fairly thick coat for that first coat and it'll fill this in really nicely and I'll have a nice closed in grain when I actually start to do the finish. So 
So while I'm waiting for that first coat on the stock to dry, there's a couple more pieces to clean up. Um, trigger guard and uh, the triggers are all I have left. I've already done the sights, did them a few days ago. But uh, the way I do these, the way I do trigger guards, is I make a little jig like this. And it uh, makes it really simple to, to work on the trigger and, and trigger guard and, and do this stuff. It keeps them, uh, you know, out away from all the areas so that I can get in and work on things. Gives me free movement all the way around, and I can position it any way I want in my vise. Um, and you build enough guns, eventually you have a whole collection of these that'll fit just about any trigger guard. And you can do this with uh, trigger guards that are pinned in as well as ones that are, you know, threaded on. Um, it's real simple. If you need to do this kind of jig for a, a pinned in trigger guard, you. Uh, just make your bracket to fit and then you uh, open up a slot in it so that you can drop the, the uh, tab through and then you uh, uh, either clamp it so that it's locked in tight or you can, you know, if you've already got your holes drilled and everything, you can run a pin through it and uh, put some wedges under it to hold it in place. So, I mean, these jigs are real simple. It's just a piece of half inch by eighth inch strap and uh, just bent to a nice shape that gives me good clearances and a good way to, to uh, hang on to it in the vise. And uh, using that little wood block on the back, I can use the same screw that's the finished screw and uh, file it all down to shape all at the same time, and it'll be matching so that it's all a perfect fit. Um, of course, a lot of this back here was uh, sanded while it was in the stock, so it matches the profile of the stock and everything, so the edges are clean. But uh, this setup allows me to just work really conveniently on trigger guards, um, gives me nice clearances everywhere, and I can reposition it however I need to to get inside and outside and, and get it all polished up properly. So that's how I do the trigger guards is uh, just make a little jig for whatever style of trigger guard you're working on and, and uh, it gives you really good good easy access to it. So this first coat on here is dry, this filler coat. And you can see it's kind of gummy and, and nasty looking and all rough and, and uh, not a nice looking finish. But uh, that's okay, that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted to fill in the pores, not care about what it's going to look like right at the minute. So I started sanding on the forearm here and uh, taking it down. And I'm using the same um, grit that I finished with. I'm using that same 360. I don't want to remove any more wood at this point. All I want to do is take the surface finish off of this now and uh, that'll leave all the filled in pores and uh, I'll get uh, a nice smooth finish on the wood. We'll have completely filled pores and I'll be able to start my finish coats from there. Um, I don't know if you can see this or not, but you'll notice that uh, the finish gums up a little bit on the metal and uh, as I'm sanding over it, um, that's not a problem. Just keep sanding, it'll all come back down to bare metal and uh, the wood will all come down to a nice smooth finish and then once it's sanded down and I have all this first filler coat taken off of here, then I can come in and start putting on really thin hand rub coats of, of that same oil finish and uh, start building up the finish on this. So I just wanted you to see how horrible it looks with that first coat on there, but that's all going to get cleaned up here shortly, and uh, then I'll be able to start doing some actual finish work on it. So I've got this all sanded down now, and uh, you can see the grain's all nice and filled now. All what was all little open spots is now all closed in, and uh, it's a real smooth finish. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start applying the actual finish to this. And uh, this is called a hand rub finish. And uh, you'll see here in a second why it's called that. What you do is you take a drop of your actual finish and uh, then you rub it as far as it will go. Make it as thin a coat as possible, rubbing it as far as it will go, one drop at a time. And it puts a real, real thin coat on there. And it takes, oh, 10 to 12 coats usually to get the, the finish built up. But uh, it gives it a real nice luster when it's done. It also gives it a real smooth, even finish because you can feel things with your fingers that you can't feel with anything else. And so by rubbing this out real thin, one drop at a time over the whole stock and putting multiple layers on, you know, with draw, adequate drawing time in between, obviously, you get a really, really even, smooth, finished coat on this. And that's how it's done is, uh, you know, one drop, spread that drop out as far as it will go, do the whole stock that way, one drop here, one drop there, then let the whole thing dry until it's completely dry, and then do the next drop and uh, spread that out as far as it will go. You just keep building those layers up and uh, 
it'll take anywhere from uh, 6 to 20 coats to get the finish you want doing it this way but it, it comes out to be a real nice smooth even nice lustered finish hand rubbing it like that and that's pretty much going to be the end of the week um, what I'm going to do is uh, usually if I was building just one gun I'd uh, go ahead and do the engraving and whatnot on the metal parts and then um, do the bluing on them while I was doing this because this part takes about 10 minutes a day uh, about 10 minutes to rub a coat in and then leave it dry for a day or two however long it takes to dry that coat but uh, since I've got two of these to do I'm going to jump over on the other one and uh, do the polishing and metal and all that on the other one, clean up the barrels and, and all the solder work just like I showed you before. So that's where I'm at, that's going to be the end of the week and I'm just going to rub this coat in and then uh, move on to the other gun.